What's up, guys? We're back with another episode. Today we're joined with Gene from Audioholics and Don Dump Don Dunn from HD Twenty Twenty. What's up, fellas? Good shit. How's it going? What's up, guys and gals? What are we talking about today? We're talking about mm. subwoofers today, huh? RTJ or JTR? Uh, it depends. I can't get it right. Yeah, I keep messing that name up too. RTJ, what's 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 I the had difference to keep between a Jeff Permanian shirt while we were doing videos to make sure I said his new company? <coughs> name. It's like the nemesis of JTR. I, I had to look at his shirt, dude. I'll be honest Me with too. you. We're filming yeah. videos, so but it's just a tongue twister. But the reality is, and I know how Sheen feels, but they're killer. <laughs> they're it's a killer product, dude. I mean, dude, it's I'm I'm a believer. You know what? I heard a bunch of people talk about it and a bunch of influencers. I'm like, man, that's a horn. How good could it sound? Uh -huh. I made clear I'm not a big horn fan. I dig their speakers. I really do. It was killer. Yeah. So these are brand new models, right? Mm -hmm. They are. Um, so this line, the RTJ or, or, J, or RJT. <laughs> RJT? <laughs> No, TJ and the bear. It's designed it, for integrators. It's yes. designed versus is direct to consumer. So they have upgraded drivers and a, a few different things that set, kind of differentiate them from the JTR standard line. So the, JTR the coolest is thing like about the, uh... them, the coolest thing about them, Shane, is that they're only 14 inches or 15 inches deep. So yes, they're massive uh, width wise, but depth yeah. wise very easy to put behind a screen or a false wall um i think that's the major intent this they're not meant to be out in the room like i showcased them obviously i don't have a false wall so i wanted to set them up jeff was very cool about wanting to drive all oh, the yeah. way down to florida bring him into the audio hulk smart house into the theater room that we finally have really acoustically controlled really well thanks to grimani acoustics uh, and you know the help of don and matt helping me uh figure out how to place everything and and my friends that helped me actually hang it so it's really been a group effort for the last couple of months to get this room going and we got the rbh system all dialed in and it sounds great and then we just wanted to see what another super tower would sound like and it's a different presentation is all i could say um everybody has their own preferences um i could tell you that i was not like don, i was like don i wasn't a huge horn fan until jeff actually set the system up and actually, the first day was a bit of a disaster because we listened to it and I didn't hear any center image and it just didn't sound like the speakers didn't disappear. And I'm like, oh, Oops. man, the bass was awesome. And Don was mm -hmm. up dancing. And I'm going to be sharing some of that real soon. A bullshit. Dude, dude. You never trust your friends. <laughs> but the next yeah. day, Matthew Pose came in and Jeff, I guess, and Matt realized that they accidentally had both speakers configured as left channels. So we basically had Genius. between Matt between Matt, Jeff, Don, and myself, probably a hundred years of experience, and none of us knew. Nobody. Well, I was, to, to my defense, I was a little drunk. So a little drunk. <laughs> well, a little. We. Just I was a, a wee bit. I was a wee bit a off little. that, you know. No, but I. You know, one of the things that really, besides the sound quality, is just how cool Jeff is. I mean, Jeff's Very a cool rad, guy. rad dude, man. I hear he's cool. He. he no, he's. <clears throat> he's super cool and when you get a little bigger shane you'll probably meet him but it was he's a really <laughs> really, really <laughs> you know, he those i'm working days. my way shane's gonna <laughs> screw me tonight so bad but no he he's actually a great guy and really truly loves audio and i did kind of a i kind of grilled him today on the phone about his background and like many of us he started in car audio and he was building yeah. boxes um custom boxes large drivers, you know, high output systems, and they kind of progressed to the home market. And I mean, he really cares about his clients. He really cares about his products. Um, you know, aesthetics be damned, but he, he actually mm -hmm. makes a really good speaker. And this didn't sound so much like a horn to me that, that I'm used to. Well, the other interesting thing is, yes, the system is, it can play super loud. It can play 140 dB. Hey, please. But the funny thing is, is anytime Jeff gave me a demo, he wasn't blasting it. He was actually playing at normal levels. He was playing, yeah. you know, playing jazz and all jazz that music, shit. orchestral music. All so it's like he's not a kind of person that listens at Don Dunn levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to crank it, dude. I like to, you know. So it didn't have any of the uh, shouty, shouty kind of a presence. 
Well, after Matt Pose calibrated it is really when it really yeah, came it was a, a game. It was a game changer when Matt worked his magic because at first it was pretty shouty, and I was like, the first day I was like, man, I really like the bass, but that was about it. And then Matt came in, and then Jeff realized the this the misconfiguration. He tweaked it out, and one thing that that speaker did that was really incredible was when we were listening to this jazz <coughs> singer, when she was snapping her finger, I actually heard it coming from center but behind me. And yeah. that's not something I could hear on my RBHs. My RBHs have a totally different presence. Like the RBHs are just a very fluid sound. It doesn't sound like there's a speaker. It was like the Martin speaker. Logans with that that very controlled directivity and dispersion. Mm -hmm. uh, it did. It kind of created almost a surround effect around your head. It was. Yeah. It was really. It was really cool. Do you not have good absorption on your walls? Is it about reflecting? Come I do on, have dude. absorption. Really? Actually, so, I took so, some of the absorption off for the JTR or the RTJ speakers because of their controlled directivity. We actually replaced some. Of, the cool thing is I have Gramani Acoustic Sonatus stuff that's all on magnets, so I could pull panels off and put different ones on, and that's exactly what we did. And because his speakers were closer together, I was trying to, you know, widen the soundstage as best as we could but considering that they were that close together and we heard a soundstage that was wider than the speakers and deeper than the speakers i think it was a pretty good success yeah i mean you, you can't uh, accurately demo there, right? speakers. You, you can't accurately demo speakers with other large speakers in the room they just affect it too much yeah period. yeah for sure but we did we spent you know i spent about an hour just back and forth between the rbh's and the rtj's level matched and obviously it was a sighted test and obviously i have my biases towards liking the speaker <coughs> i already own and jeff has his bias towards the speaker he created <coughs> but at the end of the day we all enjoyed both speakers it wasn't like one's garbage and the other one's great i mean when you get to that level of performance i mean it's just these kind of speakers are so far and beyond most of the stuff that's in the consumer market. So it's just a privilege to actually sit down, have a system like that set up properly in your room and, and spend a day or two listening to it. Yeah, that was the cool thing about it, Gene, is that both super speakers, I mean, they're both, you know, 30,000 plus dollar speakers. They both sounded amazing, but it was just different. And trying to tell which one you like best was like, you know, Salma Hayek or Scarlett Johansson, you know, I mean, they were both amazing. They were really, really great. Which and one I, is uh, I, I like the, I like the bass from the 18s. I like that, that bottom. I didn't hear one. what Shane said. I said, which one is Sama Hayek? Which one's uh, Scarlett Johansson? Oh, <laughs> the, I'd say the 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 okay. RBH is Scarlett Johansson. I think Johansson. you're wrong on both counts on that one. But go ahead. Oh, Whatever, dude. Scarlett. Yeah. You like? Hey, I could share my screen if you want to see some pictures. You want me to do that? Yeah. Let's see. All right. Let me share screen here. Entire screen. So I have. Do you see these? Yep. There you go. First, we got Don. Don. He's like the roadie right there. They were like it was like a Motley Crue concert. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to hear this, but at least oh, I want you to get a, you. Get a preview you. of this. I want you to get a preview <laughs> of Don dancing. You can hear that. Oh, you can't I, I am. Okay. I'm going to choke your ass, dude. When I see you, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. Nobody wants to see that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody wants to see that man. He's got some moves <laughs> for an old for a grandpa. <laughs> for an old man, yeah, you're right. So that's kind of a cool picture, right kind of looking up at the speakers. Look at that finish, huh? Nice. I dig it. You dig it? Let's get a close up on that again. Kind of a military finish. There we go. Yeah. I used to have a truck. Yeah. Look very similar to that. <laughs> it's a load of like smart ass like smart wooden ass. rocks so we got we got the cherry amps powering um the mid tweeter section thousand watts a channel we have the um jtr or rtj each one of those amplifiers is four jtr to the rtj yeah powering these subs and he's got a moti dsp plugged into j river on his computer and that's where he did all the eq so we were in a rush and we just wanted to hear it we plugged it into one dedicated outlet ten thousand watts of power plugged into one outlet and we tripped that breaker especially when hmm. dom was over we tripped that breaker probably within five seconds yeah i cranked that yeah. shit up dude that's what I'm <laughs> so it was the you look at those things bro like how can you not turn those up those you are only 14 and... inches deep yeah, yeah they're 15, shallow really 15 shallow. inches deep yeah, yeah. That, they look deeper than that no they're there's be the angle i guess yeah it's probably that, the angle because the driver is definitely deeper 
yeah, I think he's got a new driver on the on the subwoofers that he's that he's using on it too. They were really accurate. 14, 14 is like that. It's like it's, it was really shallow. inches, right? Yeah, so his, that's like that deep. You're telling me. This Crazy is the platform shot. that he he um, came up with, so we could get that extra that sub on top. It was a pain in the ass. The driver alone, that eighteen inch driver, weighs sixty pounds. Oh. It has, I think, a three, probably a four inch voice coil. But the amazing thing about it is, it, it only has like one milliherring of inductance, which is really good for a driver that big. So it could play mm -hmm. up high in frequency, and it has an X max of like thirty six millimeters. So I challenge any manufacturer that does consumer gear to come up with a woofer with a bigger X max than that and a lower inductance. I mean, he just really struck gold with that 18 inch driver. Is this a bespoke? Is he made it himself or is it uh, off the shelf somewhere modified? No, this is, this is for him. I know he's, uh, I'm pretty sure he makes the driver or he had it spec'd and, and, and I think that's made in the U S he mostly. won't share it. Yeah. So most of the stuff in this product, which is pretty cool, all these, yep. Can't hear you. Come on, audio godfather. Yeah, what's happening right? here? Look in the air. Did you mute yourself? Be like the guy today so, on. So give on, us on, your on, take, Don. Mario, Mario Cuomo saying that the, I love watching the, the the translators for the deaf people there. They 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 make me smile. Um, you know, listen, it was a different sound. Um. It has that controlled dispersion, kind of like an electrostatic right. does. So there he goes. you were able to get in the, in the sweet spot. Now you have Gene speakers are ideally placed, and there's been weeks of calibration involved. So this was set up, and they were on the inside. <clears throat> so yeah, the the other towers are going to affect it. But after Matthew Pose calibrated it, it was magic, man. Listen, it was light and it was fast, which and it to me horns always have a gap. Every time I and, and I've done some of the best, most expensive horns that money can buy. And I know people want to argue, but I'm just telling the truth. Listen, it's Don must be sharing from hearing loss. So it it didn't have that. It, everything was uniform and it was solid. Um, of course, it has dynamics, but it was very light and it was very fast. Wouldn't you agree, Gene? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, uh, in the mid-bass punch, you know, having four tens like that is just it's pretty awesome. And the cool thing about the design... What's that? I thought those were 18s. Uh, or mid base, dude. The mid base, the four tens. Yeah, the two big woofers, the subs are 18s. So the cool thing about that design too is, is there's no crossover in the critical mid range band because it's cro the crossovers are at 600 hertz and six kilohertz. Mm -hmm. So that coaxial driver in the center does the mid range mm -hmm. and the tweeter, and it's basically you know perfectly phase coherent as a <clears> result. <throat> so. Um, is a is that speaker for everybody no it's not and neither is my speaker that's not for everybody either so there is definitely a different kind of buyer for each product <laughs> you're like the dad gene <laughs> the dad <laughs> no it's not zoom it's just every now and then streamer drops the mic there's no reason why it does that but it does yeah. it you know we say eat a dick <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of uh what kind of tweeters are in those rbh's that has the Orem Cantus. It's like the best is that a AMT tweeter. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It, well, it's an AMT. It's an air motion transformer. But yeah, that is the best, as far as I'm concerned, uh, AMT on the market. That thing could put out godly amounts of power. So how do you, <clears throat> how would you compare the uh, the compression tweeter and the uh, the RTJ to to the ribbon AMT? <laughs> They're different. I mean, I just. To me, I personally like the AMT. I just love the sound of the AMT, so that's my preference. But I could see people that are into horns that would prefer the JTR or the RTJ. As far as horns go, that is probably the best horn system I've heard. <clears throat> and I've heard I've heard the best, like Don. I've heard Synthesis. Yeah. I've heard the JBL M2s, and I would take the speaker over JBL M2 all, any all day, day long. I mean, but it's mm -hmm. a it's a flagship speaker system. I mean, it's got four tens, a two-way compression driver, and two 18s per tower i mean there's yeah. no replacement for displacement dude you know yeah now that atm tweeter that rbh uses i think it has roughly the surface area of like a six and a half it's yeah, a high five, output ATM. yeah five or six yeah. yeah high output and uh and you could scale that up so i mean if you if you're a good designer you could do multiples of that tweeter shade them and you can have the output of the best horn and not have the horn sound if you don't like the horn sound so would you uh would you buy the rtjs for two-channel audiophile-esque speaker or would you would you go the way of rbh 
Mm. I or, mean, my, or, pre my my preference is different than other people. So I like I like what I like. I like the RBH for music. But if I was setting up like a balls to the wall home theater system and I wanted yeah. to put everything behind a screen night and day, I would definitely for value alone. It's like half the price of the RBH. I would get a full GTR system and it's, just have an ass kicking theater that just will rattle you. Superb dynamics. I mean, but you know, but you got it over 100 dBs of efficiency. So I mean that yeah. that goes. <clears throat> that looks know, like a. Those speakers look like they should be in like a big space though, like a huge yeah, space. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So not like you a, don't want to like stick that in like you don't want to stick that in a family room where you have a big horn sitting behind <clears throat> you and you have stuff rattling off the walls. That's just, Unless you want to hit. Yeah. Hundred and forty. Forty k <laughs> Did you guys measure that? No, we didn't. We didn't play it that. <laughs> I way. did. I had my. <clears throat> you probably my, had it at. I was, I was like 125 or you know and it was yeah like, i was out of the room when he did that i was like i'm gone <laughs> it was it was like bass track you know made you want to dance i mean to me that's what a good speaker does so uh <clears throat> how crisp are those highs and how those uh how's that mid-range on there well that was the thing when it was tuned together and matt did his magic <laughs> on it i mean the way it projected sound into your head was like a headphone i mean it was just that precise now because we had the speakers kind of close together um i couldn't get that precision at every seat it was really a, it was really like the best sweet spot but matt is a big believer of controlled directivity speakers <clears throat> placing them further apart and towing mm -hmm. them in at a very sharp angle and you can get because of the controlled dispersion to do time intensity trading so it gets quieter off axis and increases mm -hmm. the width of your sweet spot. I wasn't able to test that without moving. You my couldn't speed. do that with the with the with the RBHs. They were there was not enough room. Yeah, I, I did. I I understand the theory. We did a video on Audio Hawks on how that works, and I believe Matt because Matt's a freaking brainiac. But <laughs> we're gonna test it in his theater room. Matt's building a really kick-ass theater room with the help of HD Twenty Twenty. And he's got uh, what's the name of the speakers? Gettys. He's got the Getty speaker. Mm -hmm that has a really narrow directivity so i'll finally get to hear across all four of his seats if we really do have a center sweet spot for all seats i can't wait to hear and experience that so you got people saying you got the title wrong he didn't actually no. um rtj is a different line than jtr yes just so you guys know you know jtr is their direct -to consumer line um rtj is the line built for high-end integrators such as myself it's going to be a little bit higher end, a little bit different configuration. <clears throat> in fact, I don't know if I should talk about it, but I had an idea for Jeff because as integrators, we actually have many applications where we need on wall LCRs or like a high end, high output soundbar. And he's actually went back and in two days designed and is going to send us this really high end with eight inch coaxial speakers soundbar. Um, for for installations where we're doing a large scale like a micro LED or, or whatnot, so I'm excited to test that out because that could be a groundbreaking speaker um, because a lot of people just don't have the room or the means to build a baffle wall, and we have to do stuff on wall and to get that kind of output. That's something that that you know JTR RTJ is known for. Yeah, and these are for uh, for like custom installs, right? For like you, yeah no. for, for high-end theaters or high-end media rooms or spaces but you know jeff's gonna come out with a lot of different products to meet you know we're talking about maybe doing a a, a really high output in wall sub now it's hard to put an eight it's impossible to put an 18 yeah. on a standard stud wall i think you got about 14 inches um to do a driver so we're gonna look at some other stuff i know he really likes to use 18s but we might have to try some different stuff something with a cabinet that decouples from the wall well not only uh, that don that, that that 18 weighs 60 pounds that's a real beast mm. to try to put into between two stud bays you know well i mean that the the jail audio weighed more than that the, the back box well yeah not the driver though so no 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 yeah, yeah no it was pretty heavy though and they so come we'll, uh, we'll they, they come in different parts right like you kind of piece, piece them together from the looks yeah, of it well, so the guy started in car audio and mm -hmm. the most creative audio people from cabinetry and installation standpoint are guys that started with car audio. They they know how to fit a lot of sound in a tight space. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, you stack them. Basically, you put the subwoofer down. It's got a little hole <coughs> in it. Then you put the mid-tweeter uh, module on it. 
it has like little feet and it kind of sits in i told jeff it'd be good if he put some type of plate on the back to kind of hold it all together but 95 percent of the installs is going to be behind the screen nobody's ever going to be able to access it or push it over or anything like that and plus the weight of it kind of held it together so you would still work. need you still need other subwoofers i'm assuming well i'm sure you would besides just those uh those four right up front i oh, mean I'm that's a lot of bass if you want to smooth out the bass across yeah multiple listening seats yeah you don't want to put all your subs up front you want to have one or two in the back for sure but it's not because of output there's there's tons i could we could have blown a window out of my theater room i was actually really worried about blowing yeah. a window out you have 11 12 inch high output subwoofers <clears throat> in a 20 by 25 room so yeah you're not lacking on base at all did but you, then you added those four 18s to it it was insane did you say you have a window in your dedicated theater of course man i don't want to get trapped and die in my own theater room Matt didn't even put a window in his theater room. I'm like, dude, you could potentially die in this room. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to do it. He knows, yeah. he knows how I to could do have it. done it without the window, but I figured my life is more important than, you know, making the acoustics just a little bit better in the room. You the could have nice built you could have built an equipment closet and put the window in the equipment closet and just open up the little private door, go into your equipment oh, closet, put the window. Listen, what you don't know, because you don't know, is he had a production home builder. Yeah. Build it. We, it was like pulling teeth to get what we got so mm. you know, well and plus i'm putting building. i'm putting like a six inch fiberglass panel to cover the window and i have a, a curtain over it anyways so when i if i need to access the window i could pull the panel out no biggie excuses so am i getting these speakers for an audio file system though that's what i want to know because they don't look like an audio file speaker Let's be uh, i take them don't. all day long over anything the clip puts out i like those speakers i just see movie theater i see I see my local, what was it, a karaoke bar mm -hmm. type of speaker. I don't it's see, not uh, a speaker. If you if you listen to speakers with your eyes, then no, this is not the speaker for you. It, it's let, let me tell you something. It, it it's way better than you think it's going to be. I was skeptical as hell. Yeah. I saw the people reviews, people getting behind. I'm like, oh my god, they're just going for SPLs like a car stereo. Until I heard it, and now I'm a believer. And I met Jeff. I mean, it, it's a, you know, it's not a. He can paint it. I mean, if you want to spend the money. You can get a custom paint finish on it, uh, but it's not really designed to be. And in, in, I mean, if you're if you're a single guy, yeah. If you're married, you're probably not gonna fit that into your house anyplace, um, unless you boot her, you know. And what kind of extension are we getting? What kind of response with those subs? Those built-in subs? Well, in-room response, we got down to like three, four hertz. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're badass. Dang, but if you measure right. it, if you measure the ground plane, it starts rolling off at twenty. But because it's a sealed sub, it's twelve dB per octave. You get room gain because it's a shallower yep. slope than a than a vented box. So yeah, it's got and and we actually did a review of the RS one and it exceeded our extreme basaholic rating. Yeah. And to compare it directly to the and this is the older version of the driver without the twenty four the four thousand one amp. But to compare it to the RBH sub, which are both incredible subs, above 20 hertz, they're pretty similar in output. Mm -hmm. But below 20 hertz, you get more output out of the JTR version. So the I'm, I'm going to be reviewing those subs here soon. So I'm pretty excited about that, Shane. Who are you? You're going mm -hmm. to review them? On what channel? What's that? Where are you going to review them? I'm, I'm going to actually write a review. Yeah, you know, Don's you know Don's been working on writing a review for the last three years, so we'll, we'll hopefully have that by <laughs> twenty twenty eight. Yeah, whatever. What's his uh, what's his refresh cycle like? Like if I was going to buy this now, when can I? Is he one of those guys that puts out a new product every year? No, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he's it's, actually it's, he actually has some inventory uh, <clears throat> of the RTJ product. He's about sixty days out on the JTR stuff. Which, which is really fast because almost every manufacturer is behind months and months right now. Shortages right. of parts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't see this being obsoleted. I mean, maybe one day he could consider doing an active system, which I told him I think he should, especially if you're going to use a product like a Storm Audio or a Trinov, and you could do all the DSP in there and just bypass the crossovers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really... That's the ultimate expression of a loudspeaker is a fully active speaker with FIR correction, which is mm -hmm. what the RBH system has, and it's really hard to beat that. Anyway, yeah. you got you guys were what are you using? Cherry amps on there? On the GTR, there's cherry amps for the mid tweeters, mm. and then it was his uh, own amplifier for to power the subs. So, I mean, so you didn't think they were good enough to replace your RBH though? 
Well, I mean, aesthetically, definitely not. And no, I prefer the, the upper end sound of the RBH over the JRTJ. But I would love to have two of those 18s in the room added to my system. It's Even just though I already different. have four it's subs. Just, it's just different. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like, if you had either one on its own, you'd be perfectly happy. They're both reference level systems. For sure. Mm -hmm. Big time. If I didn't have... If I didn't have a reference system already, yeah, that would consider, you know. And if I built a false wall, like if Don set that up and we put like a 160-inch screen in there, I would probably put three of those behind a screen and be happy. Yeah, listen, he could build a, a prettier speaker if you wanted to pay a premium price, but I think Jeff's all about value. I mean, that system with the amps is $35,000, which is a lot of money, but... Is that's it? Just, that's honest. Well, damn. I mean, I know you know, that. for people that actually pay for shit, it is Shane. So I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 actually it's actually compares to you know many 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 of the flagship high end systems out there because we've heard them. I mean, we list them at audio shows and various installations. <clears throat> they may be prettier, but they don't have more output or accuracy. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems like a lot of money. Like, I would expect like a better looking finish for thirty five Gs. Personally, I would think so. I mean, not knocking well, it. Not you knocking can get a speaker, motor, yeah, you could get a speaker with a better finish, but you're not going to get a speaker with as much bass output as that. <clears throat> Definitely not as much bass. People output. pay a hundred grand for a Mustang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, but that's, a beautiful, it, uh, that's a beautiful looking car, though. Ugh. I'm not a Mustang fan. Sorry. Opinions vary. Right, the old ones? Come yeah. on, man. The old ones are cool. Yeah, the yeah, new yeah. ones are just okay. plasticky. Yeah. Yo, can you buy that uh, center portion of the speaker? Or is that whole that's whole modular, right? It's all can you modular. Buy whatever you want? Yeah, you could buy the mid tweeter section for sure. They're that's six grand would... six grand a piece. Right. Interesting. All right. So that doesn't uh does it make all his other his JTR stuff like what's that for? Like the common folks? I, I, what kind of a what kind of a universe? That's a loaded ass thing? question. <laughs> this is for the peasants. Let them eat cake. You know, no, dude. It's it's he's trying to do something a little bit different. You know what, Shane? Shane, it doesn't have AudioQuest cable strapped to it. There's no batteries on it. I know you're a big <laughs> AudioQuest fan and you like magic and cables, but Jeff's not about that. So he used regular 10 gauge cable when he hooked the system up, which is more than adequate. No batteries. <laughs> No antennas. Some, 35 yeah. grand. I want some magic. Look, <laughs> J, JTR and, and RTJ are just about solid, high performance, maximum dynamics and output, um, you know, smooth response, just a solid quality speaker. They're not about pretty. You know, yep. if you want pretty, you buy, you buy Sonus Faber and suffer the consequences. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's the bottom uh -oh. line is, that, uh -oh. well, I mean, is what it is, whatever. I mean, look, you could spend 30 grand on Sonus Faber or 30 grand on JTR. JTR is going to just absolutely destroy it oh, on for sure. output yeah. and volume. And it's not that Sonus Faber is a bad speaker. I'm, and I'm not picking on them. I'm just using that as an example. I mean, you can't even buy the entry level J, uh, Focal Utopia for that. I mean, but, you know, I don't even know if the Grand Utopia could match the output of the speaker at $250,000 a pair. Probably not. A different animal mm -hmm. and it's not again it's not all about spl wars but it is nice to have a lot of overhead i mean no nice look, i mean overhead. listen it's about I, there's there's an ass for every seat man like i love a beautiful well-crafted tower you know that has good output and an amazing sound i don't always listen at super high volume there's 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 a place for everything this is a yeah. speaker that can be modularly built and be a super tower in your room if you don't care about aesthetics I mean, it's not that bad it just looks like a concert speaker you know what i mean it's like you know you yep. could have that on stage in a motley crew concert but you know some people want beauty and articulation i mean it, it's really about what you want so who are we to say what's right or wrong it, it I, i'm telling you i heard that with my my all-time favorite speakers the rbh svtr super system but i'm, I'm saying they're neck and neck on output dynamics um, but just different, and they were both in the same room, so I don't know if we got the full benefit mm -hmm. of both of them because of that. Yeah. If it's not pretty, I don't want it. I pick my speakers the same way I pick my women. Yeah, whatever nice. it is. Yeah. How long pretty. does that work out for pretty. you? 
pretty yeah pretty women don't stay pretty dude whatever <laughs> if they're uh if they're hispanic they do <laughs> <sighs> you guys are killing me man <laughs> look look listen the dude makes a great speaker he's super cool i'm Cared sure about his clients. Cared, puts a lot of effort into it and and it makes a great product you should, and you i should think, try some out shane you should request some and have them set it yeah, up maybe yeah, he can yeah. put the word in for you and maybe help yeah. you out yeah yeah, maybe I should. yeah can you fit them in your theater room i fit in my theater room listen if i can fit some rails in there i can fit the his rails in there rails. Okay. yeah yeah rails. they still make that <laughs> <laughs> You still got yeah, the we should, we should we should test some rail subs because in the past they didn't do that well so hopefully they're better now than they were all right so you measured the perfect sub yesterday i saw your stream i yeah. didn't measure it um james larson did yes it Wait, is uh, the most accurate sub we've ever measured for sure okay so now that we know what accuracy is all about where do these stack up these three hertz monsters these are pretty close. If you look at our measurements of the uh, the RT1 that James Larson did, yeah, the distortion's not quite as low, but the output on that is incredibly good. And if you get the one that has dual 18s, I'm sure the distortion will be even lower. We never measure that because it's too freaking big and heavy. But this, I'm telling you, man, that 18-inch driver is probably the best 18-inch on the market. It, it was far so none, far none. incredibly fast and accurate. Yeah. Blew me away how accurate it was. A really. lot of work went into that. I, I did not know how much was into that driver until we started talking about it and you know, we saw the measurements and and more importantly we heard that sub. Like Don when I looked at that sub, I'm like, Oh, we're not gonna get a whole lot of low end bass out of this. Jeff's like, Oh yeah, the three D B points twenty hertz anechoic. I'm like, uh that's not <clears> impressive. <throat> then we got we sat and listened to it and we saw the re in room response going down to like three or four hertz. And I felt my spinal column shake when Don started throwing on bass gasm music. I was like, that's... Well, on, yeah. And the woofers weren't even moving. They weren't even moving, man. That Effort, means that we weren't, even come, we weren't even coming close to the limits of those woofers. It's a brand new driver that he has been working on for a long time. So, and, and in fact, he told me that he's going to start using that driver on the JTR line as well. Hmm. Um, oh, I didn't but, know that. Really? Yeah, so, I mean, he just told me that today. So, the, the depth it's an 18 but it's a manageable like you literally and it's got these little uh kind of indentations in it so you can stack them on top of each other and they kind of lock in i mean yeah. it's 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 a cool design man i mean you know i'm sure if you wanted a better finish on it but i mean any 18 out there is going to be a midget coffin you know what i mean and, and if you want a better value then get the jtr version of the sub that has the amp built in for half the price can you uh so what about a dyi speaker versus this Starbucks is dead to me, Nemo and Shane. No. So, can you build a speaker better than that? <clears throat> Probably not. You don't think so? No. I mean, I don't. I mean, you could do good with DIY, but subs are easier to do than main speakers. Most okay. people that do DIY full range speakers tend to not get things completely right because most people don't know how to accurately measure a loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. uh, subs are kind of a different story. You can get yeah. kind of kits to put things together, but you're not going to be able to easily get that driver. For cheap what about these drivers from like a stereo and tiger these 24 inches i mean that's a huge driver and yeah. there's there's those aren't perfect we should probably have matt pose on to talk about those but they've been out for a while i'm surprised you guys haven't checked those out yeah it's just an impractical product i mean it's even bigger than the jtr system <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's a infrasonic speaker yeah, yeah. It'll play below 20 hertz and and give you that visceral experience like uh like keith yates does on some of his theaters they, those those are designed just to play below 20 hertz yeah and, and cover that that area to give you that experience see i'm not a huge i'm not a huge fan of transducers i they did just feel artificial to me i know a lot of people like them i'd rather get my base from traditional subwoofers and get that same effect and make your riser resonate mm -hmm. like we did my my riser is tuned to 31 hertz so when the bass hits it shakes so I what's mean, uh where are those 18s hitting then what do you mean because there's like four tens in there right and then the 18s isn't it just well, that, like those are mid bass yeah they crossed yeah. over at 60 for that the whole yeah. module was 60 to 600 60. hertz basically they're covering yeah. Yeah, and it's gotcha. a the compression driver is a two-way compression driver yeah so it, it, it covers more than just a tweeter yep 
Mm-hmm. Oh, listen, dude. Like um, like those Escendos. Have you seen those Escendo subs? It's a 21 inch wide waveguide, so it allows that waveguide to play down to 600 hertz. Whereas most waveguides are only good down to like two kilohertz because they're much smaller. So, God. if you could handle the size, there's an advantage to having a large waveguide like that. That's why the JBL M2 is a two way speaker. It doesn't have a mid range because that waveguide plays down to 700 hertz. And we had this whole conversation last night. We were trying to talk about the per listens and how they are incredible and they are and how they measure, but they're expensive. They're nine grand a piece and everybody in the planet's going to argue and butt in that the subs they own are just as good, if not better. Well, good on you, dude. I'm just yeah. saying measurements don't lie. If you're looking for an ultimate audiophile type system, there's probably no better sub on the planet than per listen, but yeah. ATR is probably the JTRs are damn close, dude. And the, you know, I'm telling you, we heard it that he was playing like really accurate jazz music and boom. And just that, that bottom, that last bit of octave that it's hard to get from a 12 or even a 50. I mean, it was just, it was just there. I mean, they were super accurate. Of course they had a shit ton of power on them too. Which, shit done. Know, yeah. Shit done. Yeah. You gotta, you, you gotta really make that. There's a lot of good subs, but I mean, so somebody's asking, of- somebody's asking what's heavier, the RBH system or the JT or the RT, RTJ. And probably the RBH because I mass loaded the mid tweeter cabinet with 40 pounds of sand per cabinet. Yeah, so that's, that's 400 pounds. Po- that system now is 400 pounds each. What do you mean? You put something in there? Yeah. The sand when, in uh, it? Yeah. Last time Shane came here because the mid tweeter section of the RBH, it, it's only using half the cabinet because it's the same cabinet as their subwoofer cabinet. So they <laughs> put a big wall in it. So the rest yeah. of it just has Dacron. So Shane's like, we got to get some sand and throw it in. I'm telling you, it's going to tighten things up even more. So we yeah. we took, we went to the pet store. I bought yeah. 80 pounds of sand, and the lady's like, "What kind of fish tank do you have?" I go, "This isn't for a fish tank. It's for speakers." And she looked at me like I was crazy and like, "Nerd alert! Trust me, nerd alert. Trust me. Look, trust me. Look, those, those RBHs. It's funny how much pe- people dislike. Oh, that that, that can't work. Make sense, and that doesn't make this. Let me tell you something, dude. I, I don't care who you are and how much audio you heard. You come to sh- to Gene's house and listen to that. It's sound on a whole. I mean, yeah. it's literally like, like this. God made sound at any level, any dynamics, and it's, it's incredibly accurate, incredibly dynamic, and and it's it's. I've never heard a speaker system, and I've heard systems that cost way more that could match it. And then he brings this JTR in, and and it, in a lot of ways it did match it. It was just a different sound, you know. It it. it it was it was a horn loaded system, so it had a little bit of that, but it was way smoother. It didn't have, most horn loaded systems that I've listened to, and I've installed, you know, JBL synthesis, many the the big clips corner horns, listen to them all. This didn't yeah. have that gap. I always heard like a gap on the high frequencies with a horn loaded system. This didn't really have that. It was just a different sound. Wouldn't you agree, Gene? I mean, it was yeah, it was comparable. I mean- it was comparable. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect to hit, to image like a pair of headphones. That was really impressive to me. Yeah, like the, almost like an electrostatic Mark Logan, where it yeah. Just yeah went around your head. It was crazy. My fave, I love those electrostats. My favorite. Yeah, like I think you would. I think you would. You know that you, you've got Logans. You know that, yeah. like ethereal. Like in, if yeah. you're in the zone with Logans, it, it, there's nothing better, dude. It's like yeah. headphones. As long as you don't listen to Metallica. But, but you I'm make just it sound saying, like. You're making it sound like you need to be like dead super center. Like, no, I would not, assume not there's a big sweet spot not. in those. But that was a that was a, a that product was a function of yeah, where you had to put them together. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think if you put them wider and angle yeah. them properly and set them up, you wouldn't get that. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was I gonna? We should do a listening test on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So people could hear them on their Beats headphones. Yeah. R- like rhythmic. that British guy told me to shut up, but that's the guy that always does the, you know, you so, can hear uh, the difference because, you know, it doesn't matter. And you know, you got computer speakers. I mean, the shit you, I feel bad for consumers, man, that the shit they got to listen to and hear from these influencers, not you, Shane, but I'm just saying, I mean, really, dude, seriously. So we have a rhythmic uh, fan here, Nemo. Yeah. Rhythmic yeah. is the best sub ever. Beating his chest about rhythmic, yeah. Yeah, Dude. they make good subs. Rhythmic is, they, I know the they, guy that Brian Ding is a very talented engineer. In fact, he's done a lot of driver work for other companies in the past as well. So he makes good stuff. Magicos. And we talked about them last night. Mm-hmm. Oh, they'll they have that 500 pounder, right? That 
that Atlantic Tech 8600 is no joke. I would love to review those. Atlantic Tech, listen, I, Atlantic Tech makes good stuff, dude. And so does Def Tech. When any of these companies, when they want to, even like a SVS who makes great subs, if they wanted to make a world dominating killer sub, they could do it. It's who's just who's going to buy There's it. No market you know for I mean? it. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Def Tech? No, you're talking about SVS. If they wanted to upscale their yeah, stuff. Yeah, SVS I mean, wanted to I, do it. They, I mean, they got to come up with something to replace the, the 16, the PB 16. Well, it's well, been a could, while now. They, they, they got their market and they're a great company, man. So, I mean, that's yeah, not yeah, where they're making favorite. They're yeah, not making sure. their bread and butter on a 16. They're probably making way more money on the 3000 micro sub than they'll ever make on the 16. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, in this space that we're in, nobody's talking about the PB 16 anymore. It's a great dude. PB sixteen is a great sub. A you know, sub. Listen, I've listened to Rhythmics, and they're 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 great subs. But you know, the JTR or the RTJ would bitch slap that like Ike Turner with Tina, dude. I'm just saying it's a better sub, dude. <laughs> Hands down. Period. Go home. And unless if unless if you get the dual fifteen Rhythmic, I haven't that. that look, yeah, that's that a bad pretty, boy. Yeah. That looks pretty monstrous. That's a bad boy. We're talking yeah. about for the size of that eighteen inch sub. It's a small box. I can literally put it in the corner of my room, turn it sideways, and you don't even notice it's there. I'm interested in that because you say it's only 14 inches deep, and you're getting 15, three hertz 15. in there. Okay. It's crazy shallow. Like I, I've got 12, 12 inch subs with bigger cabinets that I put in. And all it's the, sealed, yeah. right? It's a sealed. Sealed. Tub? Sealed. Yep. That whole system is sealed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you have a ton of ton of power on it, though. So yeah. So you do need external amps amplification yeah like i mean amplification. that i prefer that honestly because subwoofer amps are the least reliable yeah. uh, amplifiers <laughs> on the market or least reliable electronics so to have it outboard amp means it's not being subjected to these incredible vibrations of a driver sitting in the same box or the heat from the thermal compression of the driver pumping base and or the seal or the seal a lot of right. companies focus on it they just screw it in how it's sealed into it yeah, I mean, the best way to do a subwoofer really is to have external amplification. Put the amps by the rack, run speaker level connections to all your locations, and run passive subs there. That's that's the way to really do it. Would you say Would you say that sealed subs are better than ported because they have a, a, a shallower there's, roll off? There's, Open that can of worms. Right, it really depends. I mean, when you get to a certain point, if the sub is really, really large, there's no reason to use a port anymore. Yeah. But in this case, because he's got an X max of 36 millimeters, whereas a normal driver has less than half of that, you need the port to overcompensate for the fact that you're not going to get a whole lot of bass at low frequencies. In his case, because he's got a driver with that much throw and it can handle that much power and he's got that much power in the amplifier, the sealed is the way to go. Yeah. Shane, do you got a Sony 325 now? Is that what I'm reading? The Sony projector? I, I do. Yes, indeed. That, dude, I just put one in the other day yeah, for a client. Yeah. That's like a, that's a dude. That as long as you have a relatively dark room, that's a kick ass. Show, Shane's a pimp. Dude. He's got it all, man. He's got it all. Well, well, you know, I'm a famous influencer. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, people man, value my like opinion. The, I like the black levels better on I, the Sony, but they're a little but, bit know, bright. JVC, JVC right, huh? had better focus. <laughs> dude, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's endearment. So uh, somebody it's else about the answer here. All right, I gotta answer this guy first. Leave Shane so, alone. Have, <laughs> stuff, dude. So have this you listened to dude. movies and music? And which movie and music did you play? Shane finally got this. Thank you for the video. Oh, well, welcome for that one. I didn't review. I just took it out the box. But thank you for buying it. Uh, <laughs> it's Gene, a, well, just Gene, so you, did you know, listen to music and movies. Um, no, we didn't listen to any movies. It was all music. What? It, it didn't make sense to listen yeah, to the yeah, center two speakers. Yeah. yeah. So would you buy another one of those for a center channel? I mean, if I was buying that system, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Seymour's head might have exploded until we get and put it on his screen then. Oh, he's my God. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, kind of troll, like, he's trolling yeah, with his screen. head's going to explode. <laughs> well, <laughs> about. So, the, Shane, do you know that we're working on a system, designing a system right now? With a 220 inch micro LED screen, is that, is that I'm not the, uh, saying, I can't say no, I can't say, but I can tell you that two million dollar room. Yeah, it's it, well, right. million dollar room. Million, but smart. we're trying to figure out how to engineer sound around the screen versus doing you know behind the screen because listen, the prices mm -hmm. will come down soon, yeah. and, and there's no freaking comparison to the best projector 
and the best yeah. screen you've ever seen. I, I've what seen these micro LEDs. They're, I've they're, seen, they're, I've oh, seen, it, I've seen the Sony one. Yeah, the Sony one is was. A, I saw and, the Sony. And, it must have been. Does, yeah. If this does become a reality, this is a real engineering problem to figure out how to get yeah. a center channel. And there's two right. ways you can. There's two ways you can do it. And Max Actu is actually actuators. Working. Uh, you, I don't think we're there yet. So two ways you can do it is if you have a sophisticated <clears throat> processor like the Trinov, yep. you can have a center channel above and below the screen. You can virtualize a center in the middle of the screen by doing that. Yes, you can. Very few we're working with Trinov that you'll be yeah. happy about that. The other way to do it is to bounce sound off of the screen if you put the speakers on the ceiling and fire them at an angle, but that's not difficult. very... There's a lot of math involved in getting that right. But, Meyer Sound does that. Meyer Sound does that now. How how when you're like virtualizing center ch channels? I'm assuming you got to be in like in the sweet spot. Like you can't be off on a wing seat or something and still get that imaging. Um, not really, because they're they're. I'm not sure if they're non-correlated or not, but it should work pretty well, even if you're not sitting right at the center seat. Because I because well, I've tried the virtualization because uh, they on the Trinov you can right. simulate a center like a God, voice of God speaker. It sounds you amazing. Well, well we have to because this. This theater has a mezzanine and it's got 28 foot ceilings on it. So it's got literally a like a VIP room balcony. Yeah. So we have to balance the sound between the, the, the ground floor and that. So there's a lot of challenges, but we've got Matthew Pose and I mean, he's doing a great job, you know, engineering it. If we we get this project and pull it off, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be a world class. I mean, we're doing <laughs> we're doing an amazing system on it. In fact, RBH is actually designing a new speaker with um, Matt, with Matt called mm. the um, the I don't know, the God the Goliath, I mean, the Goliath. The Goliath. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> six eight inch uh, mid range drivers and Doesn't three JL of those, that already? <clears throat> three of those three of those Ooh. crazy drivers. What? Doesn't JL have a glass? No, Gotham. Oh, Gotham. Gotham. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is a badass sub. By the way. <clears throat> so Shane, when you tried that virtualization, did you hmm. use a discrete speaker, or did you just have one speaker try to virtualize it? So the Trino will take all four speakers and try to phantom image a center voice of God, right. and it right. works. I tried it with Oral, with an Oral <clears throat> movie, where, right. the, where there's supposed to be a voice of God speaker, then it sounds like fucking cool as shit. Like and recorded then, uh, in Oral or just simulated? Recorded in Oral. Really? So, yeah, so yeah, did like it work one. for all seats, or did it just work for the money seat? Uh, maybe I need a bigger room, but it just worked in my money seat. So yeah, that's why. That's like, why I thought ten, ten by twelve or something. I mean, <laughs> something like that. Oh, so, someone uh, is saying I should check out Purify amps. Yes, those are the best measuring class D amps on the market. I know the yeah. guy that designed them, Bruno Putzi, is a freaking genius. Yeah. Matt yeah. has Matt has a test kit for one of those, and we're going to be measuring it. And it's really hard to measure an amp like that because the distortion and noise are below our test gear. That's how good yeah, it is. So, so Sonant. We uh, um, had, had we tested actually, that. What did we test it? We tested the NAD against yeah, the M thirty three, right? Yeah, and the I think it was the Denon or something like that. I, I think it was Denon. It kind of blew away the Denon. Sorry. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's state of the art. It, you uh, what did the M thirty three versus the A one ten? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, yeah, over twice the power too. But you, usually when you pick it up, you're just like, oh, this Denon is like fucking, it's a tank. It's so yeah. fucking beefy. It just feels yeah. like it would be like a beefy sounding. But no, man, it was just like, I was like, wow, it's just like no no competition. Say, mm -hmm. Shane, can I ask you an honest question, brother? What's up? So you do you have all your video for your theater run through your Trenov's video output, video matrix? Yeah. Do you, is it ever lock up on you? Uh, has no. It? No. Okay, that's cool. Why? Is it for you? No, I was just curious because that that's something that's relatively common in high end preamp processors yeah. versus the Japanese ones. It it just is what it is. Well, this is a French one, so maybe that's why. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm you asking got... your opinion because I value your opinion, and we're specking a trend oven in this big job. So I I'm trying to think of any issues I've had with that. I've never had like the only issue that could be annoying is if you know when you. If it's hooked up to a projector, you got to wait that one or two seconds before the HDMI switches over to the picture. I mean, that's nothing. Well, that's, yeah. that's easy. That's, though. that's that's. I, I wait four or five yeah. seconds with my storm and the projector. Yeah. So. Other than that, that's that's really it. I was just but, curious because there's a lot of very popular. I won't mention name preamp processors that are incredible values, but the video yeah. switching and and it leaves a lot to be desired, more or less. 
What do you see my JBL review tomorrow? <clears throat> JBL what? SDP fifty five is the one based on the RCAM. Oh, the processor. Oh, that is it yeah. good because I, there was a lot of problems with the RCAM processor. Was, yeah, I thought it was based Ooh. on the Trinoc. That's the seventy five. The fifty five is on RCAM. Yeah, it, it's the same yeah. thing as an RCAM basically. Just in do you like clothes. it? It's the same thing as an RCAM, just in different clothes. Yeah, I've heard of mixed reviews on that stuff. Gene, have you heard of Genelec's The Ones? I know Genelec. I don't think I heard The Ones, but they do make good speakers. So, Gen Yeah, there. I did a whole Genelec theater a few years ago, and it was pretty damn awesome. It was incredibly Zola. dynamic. Yeah. They're all self-powered, right? Oh, yeah. Most yeah, of Genelec's are self-powered. Very yeah. expensive. I mean, you They're know, studio most speakers, your, monitors. Yeah, yeah. Most of your high-end studios have it. Are, are, so you wouldn't use those for uh, home theater? You'd be, it'd be more like a like a personal, like a small. You could. Theater. I mean, it depends on the output capability of it. But I've done no home reason. theater with them. They yeah, make no things. Oh yeah, they, they do make high outputs. Yeah, yeah, they, they make. Do, uh, but they're expensive. really, really expensive. really expensive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did see those. I saw they had some, some Meridian subs. I did a bunch of Meridian theaters back in the day, and they were amazing when they worked. But they were killer. Um, what else? Oh, everybody, uh, thanks for the uh, Super Chats, by the way. And I know we're coming up on one hour. Let me... Uh, what was that? Already? Yeah. Yeah, real quick. Everybody, if you guys want to sign up for my Patreon, really quick here. I know we got a bunch of you guys here. Listen, dollar a month. Get you some uh, benefits. Get shout out on my next video. $5 a month. Get you some digital freebies, free movies, free 4K movies, physical discs, digital codes. Wow. discounts from value electronics because we are partners with value electronics so if you want to buy that new denon or whatever or if you want to team up with me maybe i'll get you a discount through don who knows <coughs> how much is the fans only page where fans it's only only fans that's, uh, <laughs> that falls between the one and the five that's one <clears throat> that's 149 a month for, for my only fans okay. but uh for ten dollars a month yeah we do some uh, private video chats you and i wow talk about Home theater exclusive. But why? Why? Because it's me. Shame. Nice. Because it's nice. you. I'd pay that. I feel privileged that I can video chat with you without paying now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, you, 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 will, you pay. I'm honored. When you I see a pay. text from you, Shane, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Shane Lee's texting me. Fuck, you made it. <laughs> Did you put my name as Shane Lee in your phone? Shane wakes yeah. up at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> How loud a... Uh, question for each of you how loud is loud enough like what db just curious Th that's a question i want to ask you before. 140 db <laughs> when people say hey this is my reference level i have my own reference level like i know they like the standards yeah. like what 75 or 85 i mean i'm comfortable like if it's around 80 um it Listen, becomes, it's different from different speakers some that's speakers true. can play 110 115 dbs or more and it doesn't strain your ears yeah. you just don't know it's that loud like yeah. like that like Which that uh, rbh system well, it yeah. is, but it just doesn't hurt your ears. But some systems are, you know, in mega dynamic compression and they're struggling. They'll play it, but it just it's it strains your ears. I mean, I think like 80 to 90 is a comfortable level, you know, 80 to 90, 90, get, 90 gets dangerous if it's sustained. 80 yeah. is OK. Well, it depends on how you measure it. If it's yeah. a weighted or exactly. C weighted, yeah. if it's a weighted, it'll be in the 70s or 80s. And you go to sea weighted with subs, it's like a hundred. So I mean, especially Don, because he likes the subs twenty dB hotter than the rest. And and to my, my to his defense, to his defense, I'm probably ten or fifteen. Beatsaholics. Yeah. Right. It's like, give me a break, dude. You can sell that shit to everybody, but I know better. Yeah. Really cool and informative. Love the RBH brand. It's you a, know, unfortunately, RBH doesn't like to deal with anybody but Gene for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. They're, they're they're revamping. Listen. RBH is revamping their marketing. They are. They're revamping their line. Listen, they've got some really, really exciting, like world class products coming out. And I, I always say five hundred dollars in RBH buys you what a thousand dollars buys you with some of the major brands out there. That's just the reality. They may not be the prettiest speakers, although they're changing that. But RBH? From, from a performance standpoint, oh RBH is dude, they're killer, killer speakers. They look like they're good looking speakers. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they I like the look. Yeah. 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 So, Shane, can I plug something real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, on August 12th at 8 p.m., we're doing a virtual press event for Yamaha and the new Avantage mm -hmm. line on our YouTube channel. 
So mm -hmm. I invite you, all of your guests, to come there and ask their questions about the receivers. And then on Friday, August 20th at 4 p.m., we're doing a virtual press event for RBH Sound, releasing their new unrivaled speaker line. Yeah, that's what you I'm know. What about. would really help them out? What's if that? They did one, if they did one of those on my channel too. I agree, and I think they we should be putting you in touch with them for sure. I would love to check out some of their subwoofers, two yeah. of them, in my home yep. theater. Yep. Yeah, all 34,000 of your subscribers would love to see that. <laughs> all 34 <laughs> of yours. <laughs> you know, you know, Gene, he's hanging out with this guy with a million subscribers. Who is? Over here. He's, he's like building beef jerky and stuff over there. And some other guy, he's... Uh, Oh, the survival channel? <laughs> yeah. It's my Batman job. Don's ready for a oh, zombie apocalypse, man. I, I actually am ready for it. So one, Look, one you're, person... If you're not preparing, you're doing it wrong. So one person you guys don't want to mess with, in, in all honesty, is Don. Because he's got probably 50 weapons just in his belt pocket. Ready to go at any given time. You don't want it. You don't want to mess with Don. And even if he doesn't have, even if he doesn't have his weapons, he's still pretty badass. He'll still get up in your I'm face. I'm a pussy, so. dude. What's he's, he, what? he, he's like our bouncer. What is going on with CD? Is people gonna? I know some people are pulling out, but oh, what's, uh, what's happening with Savant, that? I just heard Savant pulled out, but that's no. Did they call. really? So yeah, they need to pull out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Control four is all up in that shit though. They Savant are. Pulled out, Snap yeah. AV actually invited me to uh, to do some uh, video mm -hmm. stuff with them. But anyways. We're sending four of us are going to Cedia. We're doing three days of live streaming technology, kind of webinars, informational stuff with Sound United. Sound United is our official sponsor, so we're going to be at the Sound United booth. We're going to have these big banners. We're going to Phil have Jones. people. Phil Jones is going to be helping us Man. out. We got Sean Olive on the loudspeaker committee. Anthony Grimani, RBH Sounds going to be there. Perilisten is going to be there. THX is going to be there. AV Pro um, Edge. AV Pro Edge. Luxel. So we've got THX. I, I already said THX, but um, we've got all these different guest speakers. We're going to be doing a total of nine streams in three days. Plus, we're doing produced videos, which I wish you were there to help us, Shane. But I can't afford you, man. <laughs> I gave you the option, me and my cameraman. If you got, if you want some legit looking speakers or reviews, yeah. Well, camera camera work for sure. Somebody asked about <laughs> Andrew Robinson. What we think of his, his, he loves his reviews. I think he's a very attractive man, just to be honest with you. And I'm not even gay. I'm just saying he's very pretty. <laughs> oh, oh, Andrew Robinson? Who's that? He better not go to prison. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, let's I like, I like his reviews, though. Until Who's? his wife chews his ass out, you know? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here you go. Better you watch go. what you say because he'll do a rant about you. So, don't, oh, do that. don't do that. Dude, don't do I will that. drive to California and put my foot up his ass. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Kidding, Andrew. I love you. I've watched your and read your reviews for years. I do respect you. I have no idea who he's even well, talking mostly, about. So mostly, sorry. Right, mostly. right. Whatever, dude. You know, y'all give a shit. I don't. Is he a survivalist? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Is we, that who you're talking? You're talking about a survivalist? You Andrew, laugh all you want. What's it, Andrew some Robert? Shit, Andrew wait till some shit. Wait till some shit goes down. Uh, so Don's biggest going. fear is aliens coming down and butt probing him. <laughs> no. so i saw a ufo when i was 12 okay. with my mom and all they do is give me shit about it because they they do exist dude. when you're 12 well i still saw it bitch. i saw a lot of shit when I you're was what 12. 21 <laughs> i mean huh? you still remember 12 <laughs> so listen if we try to have fun listen it, people are so damn uptight this is audio this is supposed to be fun we're like talking about killer gear I mean, people are brutal and, and angry. People buy on impulse based on the opinions of others who get their opinion from the internet and fiercely defend their purchases. You know what? All that really matters is when you sit in your room and you're listening to music or you're watching a movie and you love it. And that's all that ma that's all that matters, dude. That's all that matters. And let's, we really want to try to shift back into the experience more than just the gear. We just want to rate the gear so you, when you are buying something, you have <laughs> actual science and measurements. <laughs> what? What's so funny? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I mean, that's probably yeah, that's probably it's it's totally, probably pretty accurate. Totally drinking at twelve. <laughs> that's true. You know what? Pretty accurate. <laughs> I did hell yeah. You know what? Whatever you bunch of candy ass mother. <laughs> 
Did you watch? <laughs> do you guys watch the Suicide Squad? Did you watch the Suicide Squad yet, Gene? Yeah, I, I did. Can't. I thought. Yeah, I, I haven't. No, yeah. is it better than the original? Because the original was so atrociously it was, bad. It was. It was. Dirty I Harry. Like dirty, dirty Harry gives Suicide Squad the finger. No, it was all right. <laughs> I mean, it was just silly entertainment, but it wasn't yeah. bad. You know. I mean, it was good. It, is, it was it gory. Is. a little gory. Like, I like. Hollywood would have hit a home run in a while, dude. You know what I mean? I finally like, sat through four hours of the Snyder Cut of Justice League. That was like giving birth, man. What? You three, didn't like it? I liked it, four but it just three. never it never freaking ended. It was like, geez, man. Ben I was going to find my Hitachi, my Hitachi <laughs> big screen and roll it out and watch it. You know what I mean? They yeah. put it in chapters for you, you know. Yeah, and they did it in 4-3, which I didn't understand what the hell the point of that was. But it's DC, DC can't get it right, dude. I mean, other than the first Wonder Woman movie, they just, I mean, Aqu Aquaman was okay, but. I oh, mean, I hated Aquaman. I, yeah, him. well, I mean, he's really cute, you know? I mean, yeah. the, the red-headed the red chick. No, the red -headed Don, chick Don no, likes no. lady boys and cute man. What does that tell you? <laughs> he likes my dude, camera lens, too. You say what you want, dude. I am what I am. You like that you know? camera lens, right? That is a nice lens, man. I am yeah, the should, video. You pulled that camera out like five times, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, until you design your own knife, that Green Berets and Special Holy Forces shit. guys use. Yeah, I designed that, by the Where way. Um, a lot of time so on you ever hands. seen the, the TV show Alone? The guy that won the first season, Alan Kay, worked with me, and I designed this this badass blade. Dude, so, you could take yeah. out Predator with that thing. That ain't a knife. <laughs> this eyes, is a knife. Those eyes. I see you. I just cut yourself, right? Right? So whatever. Look. I, heard, I heard they're rebooting the Predator uh, movies. Again? Yeah. yeah, I think there's a. It's, it's not going to be woke this time, please. It's just female. It's female led. That's all. The last one was yeah. horrible. I, you yeah. know, so all all of you consumers out there, look, do you want highly polished, pretty videos that just give you some loose opinions, or do you want some actual freaking science and measurements along with some opinions? I mean, I'm just saying. You know, wait, wait. Do, are you referring to a question here? Am I missing something? No, I'm not. Not you, dude. I'm, were you paranoid? No, I thought you were answering a question here. No, no I was just making a statement because I've drank since I was 12. <laughs> what if we went when a full range speakers, no subwoofers? What are your thoughts? That's a really bad IMAX. idea in small rooms, acoustics. Really bad idea. Full range, that's considered down at 20 hertz. Yeah. So you would still have so, subwoofers. Yeah, so all of the speakers in your room are usually not in the right locations to produce good bass. So not having a subwoofer channel, which strategically plays subs, and just having mm -hmm. all your speakers play full range. Most speakers are not full range speakers. You throw LFE into them, they're going to blow up. Especially you put the Amaze demo from Dolby Atmos. Yeah. <laughs> ask, ask, us ask us how we know. Ask us how we know. Yeah, yeah we so shut off breakers. Yeah, I've, I've tried the towers for rears. I'm a huge proponent of 15 degree angle above listing playing for sides and rears i just think they sound better like a, a theater i don't like speakers at ear level some people might want to argue with it but you're just wrong so somebody's asking shane can you put up that chat about the mono price sub if you don't mind yeah. the last one so we have a full review of the new Monoprice 13-inch sub with CEA data. I've been sitting on it for a <clears> month because Monoprice didn't get their landing page together. They told me it was going to be at the end of the week. Then all of a sudden, everybody started posting videos on it. So I'm going to post it tonight. I'm going to get basically uh, edit it tonight, and it's going to go up probably in the next hour. So go to the audiohawks.com homepage, and you'll see the only review with CEA 2010 data and full measurements. So it's a pretty incredible product. That is a uh, that's a big that's a heavy sub too. Oh yeah, yeah. For so the guy that designed listen yeah. to this, Shane. So the guy that designed that sub, the driver, is the same guy that designed the awesome speakers in Rendell Sound, and the same mm -hmm. guy that designs Paralisten. So what does that tell you? That this guy knows his shit, and he's designed <coughs> great product from multiple companies. Uh, yeah, I've never seen a thirteen inch or weigh one hundred and fifty pounds or whatever it is. Insane. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And I have to thank you because I never heard of a Rendell sound until I saw it on your YouTube channel. And I really yeah. trust Shane's opinions because Shane, Shane is not like the typical YouTuber, smarky kind of guy, snarky kind of guy that just has good video production. Shane has good knowledge. I Shane's trust cool. his opinion. Shane's cool as hell, dude. Shane's Shane a super good. handy guy. The shit he pulls off in his own theater room in a relatively small space, and the fact that he has like this waiting room 
with popcorn and TVs. Dude, he's the fucking bomb. Let me tell yeah, you guys something. How did he Shane fit that the in a mobile home? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> like, like you're like a you're like Houdini, man. You he know? is. He hangs he it. hangs speakers from like these pillars on a ceiling with these yeah. giant metal poles. I mean, They're on chains, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, chains oh, whatever, actually, man. Cool. Whatever. He's cool as hell, dude. Like yeah. you guys, I'm sure you all know that, but you don't know. It. He's a he's a cool ass dude, and we give him shit. Yeah. Because it's endearment, you know. Yeah, that's we right. Love Shane. We love he's Shane. got the best voice. He's got like a. He should have a sex line. Yeah, well, he's got. Little, I got these little bright. They're a little bright. Too bright. Yeah. They're a little, little bit too bright. bright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send me some shit. I'll talk about it. Yeah. You guys sound like you're trying to have uh, <laughs> you know, phone, phone sex. How does that fucking body? Working. How does that fucking body and head produce that voice? I don't understand. You know I mean? <laughs> Don's got the voice. Don's got the look for radio. Shane's got the voice for radio. <laughs> he, he does. Yeah, I got the look for radio. Like, yeah, Monolith exactly. subs, respectable brand or SVS ripoff? They're not you know, an SVS ripoff. That's the thing about mono prices. Like they're crazy. Like they make some absolute what I shit products in my opinion, mm. and they make these amazing products on the other end. Yeah, you're talking well, about you their don't accessories. Buy, you don't buy their accessories and in, in, yeah. in integrator products. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're, you know, I'm I'm I actually do this for a living. You just talk about it, so I'm just saying. Yeah, no, you're right. But the monolith brand is really crushing a lot of the online competition. Killer, I mean, killer. Yeah. You don't think the uh, the name monoprice behind it just kind of? I mean, it's the same thing with Hyundai with Genesis, right? Yeah. People thought Hyundai was a cheap Korean brand, but now look at the Genesis G7 and the G80. Those cars kick freaking ass. They hired the BMW engineer to retune all their cars. So oh, Monoprice shit. hired one of the best acoustical engineers to design their speakers, and they partnered with ATI to design their electronics. That processor is no joke. It's a data set processor in a Monoprice badge. So there's a Genesis I've heard that better. My buddy's, my buddy's had it and he says it's a piece of shit really yeah he's going through wow. two of them they've all frozen up every time like locked wow. up like twice. couldn't recover twice wow that's unfortunate yeah i mean james had it for like six months he never had a problem so i wonder if he i don't know if he got lucky with his unit but when it works it's great yeah same thing, with the, J- same thing with the jbl Larson. jbl oh yeah. yeah 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 when it works it's great but then when it doesn't it's a yeah. Like, you like, like you see in the radio. Like a BMW? I got a Mini Cooper. Hey, say what you want. My M240i is the most reliable car I've ever owned. I have, I've had it for four years, and all I do is break. All I do is uh, oil changes on it. That's, That's it. That's the first I mean, one in history. No, the two series is actually the highest JD power rating out of any car in its segment. That's really? why one of the reasons why I got it. Yeah. Did you get that uh, during the pandemic, or did you get that? Okay. No, I got that two years before the pandemic. <laughs> didn't, like you, didn't, you, didn't you buy that with your GoFundMe money? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's that's someone that's just grown all over a forty dollar SD card because I didn't um, give him the proper thanks. Oh no. oh no, Shane, you like to start shit. What are you talking about? Yeah, right. <laughs> what kind? What kind of finish you have on those uh, RBHs? Are they glossy or are they? Unfortunately, uh, oh, they're whatever. Shane, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're black gloss, which does not do well with a big screen in the center, and you can see the reflections if you're not if you're sitting off axis. So, it's like virtual reality. Or yeah, it reality. is. Yeah, those uh, those uh, TJR what are the, RTJs probably do a much better job in that scenario. See, For sure, he, he can pronounce yeah. it either. It's weird. Yeah. It's like a mind game. It's really hard. It's really hard to say something backwards like that. It's like. I was the same as Don. I was looking at Jeff's shirt the whole time. I would mention the brand while we're shooting the video. Wait, what does that even stand for? I know. I assume the J stands for Jeff. JTR. What's the R? Jeff. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. That's a good question. I, ask him. I should ask him that. Yeah. I ask him everything else today. So you are going to vouch for the speakers that anybody interested in this chat should probably pick totally. them up. Totally. Do we have yeah, any? Uh, sure. Do you have any affiliate links you can give me so I can put in the in the chat here? I mean, you can't buy these direct, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to go through somebody like Don. If you need some, see me. I can hook you up, man. Yeah, yeah. So, you yeah. mean I want to see his sound bar that he comes up with? He's gonna. Is he's he coming up with a sound bar? Uh, well, he's I asked him to. In two days, dude. Let me tell you something. You say That's what you a want. There's market some, expanding. There's some sound yeah. bar, yeah, sure, like Leon. Yeah. Some Theory audio. 
Fury. Fury audio yeah, kicks yeah. ass. Plays like 120 dBs. I mean, yeah. there's some sound bars in the, that kick ass and have wide sound stage and sound good on music. They sound good on surround. And that's what people want because wives don't want to see speakers. A lot of people don't. So say what you want. Yeah. That is a very interesting hat you have tonight, Don. <laughs> it is what it is, man. You know. Did you buy that off my affiliate link? <laughs> affiliate link. Such a businessman. <laughs> is my initials on the Someone back? Someone's asking about the Storm audio processor. It's pretty awesome. Did um, you do the review not, on that yet? The full? No, I actually just I just did the test <clears> report <throat> that's going to go on next week on our YouTube channel. I have a whole written report. Uh, the video is going up next week, and then I'm going to finish the actual written review. Hopefully. Hopefully before Cedia. I would say they're well on their way here soon in the near future to be in a competitive product to the to the trend off. Yeah. <laughs> Travis uh, Covington is in the chat. Travis is one of my Patreon uh, patrons. Thank you for joining us today, Travis. Uh, he's got a kick-ass theater, by the way. He's got all the Kef THX in-wall speakers, like nice. big gigantic ones, like everywhere. Like You can't even see them. They're, they're um, actually cool, yeah. Yeah, they're fucking awesome speakers. Uh, he's got the. Uh, I know he hates it. every time I do this, these live streams. I shit on the mono price all the time, but he's got he's got the uh, the monolith, and he says that all those issues have been fixed. Uh, yeah. I, I hope so. I hope so. I I know they're not sending me one. That's for sure. I've asked several times. I've given up. Well, yeah, you, you haven't been exactly very nice to the brand, Shane. Yeah, you're kind of a jerk, man. What's Only up? if they're shitty. I say they're shitty. Well, no, I, 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 give I say a nice for what way, they do good. I say and, politely, and though. Run them in the mm. ground for what they don't do good. I mean, <laughs> I've had customers go, I could get these mono price in ceiling speakers for 68 bucks. And, you know, they're they're 10 inch four ways. And but I'm like, dude, come on. Like, they, you, you get what you pay for, dude. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Actually, like, those, mono, those, those mono price THX speakers are really good. The, yeah, are. certain things they make. Are, yeah. are world class. They're, just, they, they're designed they by Clarity, it, and, and they, I mean, they. Who are they designed by? Clarity Audio, which does incredibly good work for lots of companies, which is mm. also behind the uh, guy that did Paralisten. So, I mean, there's a lot of common good engineering between these companies, and they have flush mount products. Monoprice actually has a flush mount version of their box speakers, which many internet direct companies do not. What is hold on? What is uh? What's that? What are those RTJs made out? Is it MDF, HDF? No, it's made out of uh, plywood. Several layers of birch plywood, so it's really strong. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You probably couldn't lift one, but I'm just saying yeah. they're they're really well made. He's trying to flex his arm. Look at <laughs> what did you say? He's like, he's like, what did you say? He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. So, Let's yeah, see. I gotta get. I gotta get. Magical going, guys. paradise said, "Can you imagine a 160 pound sound bar?" So he actually said the sound bar is going to weigh about 70 pounds, which is reasonable. I mean, we we can work yeah, with that. I guess so. It's with three eight inch coaxial high output drivers, you know, maybe cross it over at 80. Hmm. With his bird. with his dual 18s, his 15 inch 18 drivers. Guy likes the rock, dude. You can't blame him. I mean, mm -hmm. it's what it is. Well, all right, uh, Gene, you want to plug your uh, Patreon, whatever? Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. So before you go to my Patreon, please make sure you're a patron of Shane It's Spare Change. But if you have some extra dough side set aside, uh, we appreciate <coughs> your change. support on our channel, patreon.com slash audioholics. I hear a doorbell. I think that's mine. <laughs> At, is, it, is it midnight? Do you order a pizza? Dude, yeah, let me go, guys. I don't yeah. know why this door is ringing. All right, I'll see you All guys. Right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Look through, the, look through the people. Don, did you want to plug something? I'm sure you do. No, I did. Just look, I'm glad. I enjoy these candid, entertaining conversations that we have. I know I can be a little bit gruff, but I just try to keep it real. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's so many great audio products, dude. It's, I mean, you know that, dude. It's really hard to to um, knock most stuff that's out there now. I have to say though, that the that the RTJ speakers really changed my mind and blew. They're the best horn speakers I've ever heard. They really were. I mean, they were they were very light, very fast, had a great sound stage. Um, they didn't 
have that harshness that you can get from horn speakers. Now, I've used horn speakers many times over the years, but a lot of times that was when they were in a large theater behind an acoustically transparent screen, acoustically treated and calibrated. So we had to overcome these these things like the screen from the get-go and with great success. And they sounded very good on home theater, but most people that have theaters like that don't use them for two-channel listening. I mean, yeah. that's just the bottom line. Well, you asked earlier, would, would, would this two-channel system please people? Yes, absolutely. If you like horns or you like, you're a fan of the old Klipsches and that type of setup, this is next level. It really is. And those All 18... Right. Or killer dude there you have it i guess rtj the real deal i know and jtr is not the real deal is what you're saying but no, rtj I, is I mean, what well you gotta put words i mean really dude you know that, jedi mind that, tricks only work on the weak-minded i mean so that's what it sounds like jtr has a cult following rtj is what i heard and they're very similar in fact the drivers he's using in the well, well in charles Metzen. charles Metzen had a cult following as well we know what happened with that so you're saying that RTJ is a better sounding speaker than the JTR. Stop being a dick. <laughs> that's what you're saying, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. You know that's not what I'm saying. My subscribers know what you're saying. What do you have what do you have now? What's your subs in your theater? I got rhythm mix right now. All right. Sorry. I'm kidding. I actually like Riz. I love rhythm mix subs. I've 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 actually heard tons of them and they're great subs. I'm just saying these these RTJs or JTRs. And the 18 are phenomenal. They're world-class subs. Well, I'm sure they are. I mean, I, I got GL Audios in my house. I mean, they're world-class subs. So, Quite know. possibly. Maybe one day I'll listen to some TJR subs. Possibly. TJR, or TJ. Stop being a dick. Maybe you would. RTJ subs. Just so you guys all know, we all love each other. <clears throat> Mostly. All right. Plug, 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 your, uh, plug your thing. Plug your HD 4020, 2020, HD 20, 420, integration company in Central Florida. We do world class jobs. In fact, we just um, submitted a job for the CDA and CE Pro Best of, which is winning one of those is like the Academy Award for Best Picture. So we're crossing our fingers. We put a lot of work into it. We do world class work. Um, and, you know, when you consult with Gene, you get to consult with me. Um, Gene talks to you, makes recommendations, and hands it off to me. Then we get to the nitty gritty of it. Integrators, top integrators out there are amazing. There's a lot of knowledge, a lot of things you might not have, have thought of. And we're able to bring that out <clears throat> to give you room with the best experience possible. So if you, you go through Gene and, and contact, do a consultation with him, and he's very fair and does it, we can actually, you know, help you design your room or your space, improve your sound. And in some cases, sell you equipment um, with a good deal. So, you know, that's my plug, I guess. But my real plug is I love this shit. I love home theater. When when we get off here, I want to go to the two channel on my focals that are not bright. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for that review, guys. Coming up this week. Whatever, dude. Focal can't does. I think you're out of your freaking mind, but whatever. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to get out of here. Check out his website. Check out my Patreon, more importantly. Yeah. And subscribe. You have, um, dude, you have really cool, you know, fans that come, that come in. Like, seriously, I always enjoy coming on your channel. They're cool. You know what I mean? So, unlike some of the people on YouTube who will say anything. Oh. I do. I enjoy you guys. Thank you.